Praise the Lord. Today is an exciting day po. Uh, not just because patapos na tayo sa series natin, which I don't know kung excited kayo ron. But uh, exciting because mamaya po, we are going to come together as one body po sa San Pedro uh, in order to really honor our risen Lord. Amen? And para sa akin, exciting yan. Sino sa inyo excited po for today? Yes, we are. So, we are right now sa last part ng series natin. And just in case na hindi kayo nakaabuo ng series na yun, well, let me just summarize for you kung ano yung mga na- uh, First of all, uh, naituro ko po on the first Sunday of this series, yung katotohanan that Jesus came to change the world. Starting with you. Ito po ang mission ng ating Panginoon. That's why Jesus came. So that He can change the world. And the good news po is that malapit na po yan. But even better pa is the fact na ngayon kumikilos na siya sa buhay ng mga tao. And I, I told you, gaya nga sinabi ni uh, Swani kanina, Jesus saves completely. So if there's any area ng life natin that we need salvation for, hindi lang sa kabayaran ng mga kasalanan natin, but even yung ating daily life in terms of how we deal with uh, temptations, mga tukso and failures. Well, Jesus saves us from that as well by giving us the Holy Spirit. Para sa ganun, we can become victorious sa buhay po natin. Hindi tayo magiging talunan. And so, said na napakalaga maintindihan natin na God gave His Son to save more than one. Kaya nga, dapat po natin isipin na yung mga friends po natin, yung mga loved ones po natin, ay dapat po natin dalin sa Panginoon as much as we can kung meron tayong opportunity. Amen? And last Sunday, uh, together magagawa natin ito in a far more effective manner kasi together we are better. Kung tulong-tulong po tayo sama-sama and if the churches would learn how to really uh, cooperate with each other rather than compete with each other, diba? mas magiging mabilis at magiging effective po ang pinagagawa sa atin ng ating Panginoon. And we would be able to save more people bago dumating ang ating Panginoon. How many of you know na darating muli ang ating Panginoon? <laughs> Are you excited about that? Diba? We should. Hindi tayo dapat matakot o materify. So if you're afraid, when naiisip mo yung sinasabi nilang end of the world, pag natatakot ka, it only goes to show na kailangan magbalik loob ka na sa Panginoon para huwag ka na matakot. Amen? Because those who have put their faith in Jesus are no longer afraid. Kasi alam natin na hindi na tayo mapapasa ilalim pa sa judgment. Because Jesus died for us. Amen? And so, we come to the last part ng ating uh, sermon series ngayon, the Great Go Mission, because we are being asked by the Lord to go. But we all know na sometimes we don't go. Kahit anong sabihin ko or sino man sa mga nagtuturo ng salta ng Diyos, you know, probably hindi lang naman ako siguro ang narinig niyo magsabi ng ganito na we need to go, we need to uh, use whatever opportunity meron tayo sa trabaho, sa school, sa kahit na housewife tayo or ngayon uso na yung house husband. Meron na rin mga house husband ngayon, di ba? You know, there was a time na walang gano'n, pero ngayon uso na yun and you know, may honor na rin ngayon yun, di ba? Pag sinaya mo, house husband ako. Okay? That means siguro yung wife mo is the one working tapos ikaw yung nasa bahay nagluluto, you know? Although my, my two children, yung andalawa kong anak, probably you know, hindi nila gusto yun. Kasi hindi nila gusto yung luto ko. Okay? So, baka raw sila mamalnourish. Okay, so let's pray right now as we come to the last part. Kasi I believe na itong pag-uusapan natin today, if there's any truth na kailangan talaga natin maintindihan at mag this is it. Itong pag-uusapan natin ngayon. Because I believe more often than not, the reason bakit hindi tayo nag-go-go, is because yung faith natin dito sa bagay na to na pag-uusapan natin, hindi ganun kalakas at hindi ganun katibay. So we are going to talk about this. And let us pray right now and ask God to just be with us. Lord, thank you nga, Panginoon, na you have sent your Son 
to begin an exciting process, Panginoon, kung saan ang climax nito is that you are going to renew this world. You are going to make everything new. And for that, we're so excited, Panginoon. But even more so, we are excited by the fact, Lord God, na ngayon, as we speak, your Spirit is moving and working in people's lives kasi you want to make us new also. So Lord, binabago mo kami through the Holy Spirit. And you are calling people to believe in the gospel. And yun ang dahilan bakit meron mga churches so that we may become salt and light so that we can speak the truth not just by words but by our lives. At sa pamagitan nga nito, Panginoon, that we may be able to persuade as many people as possible to believe in your Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So Lord, as we come to this last part ng aming series, may you speak to us and cause faith to rise up in our hearts, Panginoon, especially ngayong araw na to that we are celebrating a very special day. Father, in Jesus' name, we open our hearts to you. This is our prayer. In Jesus' name. Lahat ay magsabi po ng Amen. Well, praise God. In many, many places, merong iba't ibang klaseng mga celebrations. Merong iba't ibang klaseng mga events. If you go to the malls, the hotels, makikita nyo that everyone is saying Happy Easter. And usually what they mean by that, is merong dalawang kuneho or some, you know, dalawang rabbit or something na nakawala ng itlog. And we're supposed to look for those things kasi may premyo. What a sad development. Kasi nung araw, pag sinayin mo Easter, it's so clear na you are referring to the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Today, naging secular na yung event na ito to the point na ang mga tao are not really very much interested in recalling or even celebrating po the resurrection of Jesus. Instead, ginagamit natin itong araw na ito, for most people anyway, and maybe siguro itong mga nakarang araw, ginagamit natin yan para mamasyal, pumunta sa beach, mag-enjoy. Rather than isipin at alalahanin what Jesus has done. There are two major events in the calendar na tayo mga Kristiyano should really pause and, and stop whatever it is ang ginagawa natin and reflect upon. Well, of course, una-una na dyan, yung Christmas. Which again, isa na naman sa mga event na naging secular na and naging uh, medyo consumer-oriented na. na pag sinabi natin Christmas, usually Christmas lights, puto bong-bong, bibingka, at kung ano ng mga uh, bagay na nangyayari during Christmas time, okay, crispy pata, and cholesterol. You know, all of that. You know, it's all happening during Christmas time. But that's the event na dapat sinicelebrate talaga natin because that's the birth of Jesus Christ, or at least yung, uh, yung panahon na yun, that's why we celebrate that. Sapagat alam natin through that birth, God came near. No, Emmanuel, God with us. The second event is of course this event today. And it's very important na sinicelebrate natin to bilang mga Kristiyano. And, do, and we do not end up sana like the rest of the world na ang focus nila ay yung mga rabbits na nakawala ng itlog. That we instead should this day as a very important day and we call it Resurrection Sunday. At kapag Resurrection Sunday, of course, ang ating sinasabi at dinedeclare, He is risen. Amen? Say that with me. He is risen. Nabuhay siyang muli. And so, who is, He is risen indeed. Nahirapan kayo doon? English? Okay. So sabihin mo sa katawin mo, He is risen. Tapos sagutin mo, He is risen indeed. Sabi ng iba, ah, basta, yung sinabi ni Pastor Bong, kung naman yun, okay. He is risen, and He is risen indeed. But today we need to ask a very Did He really rise from the dead? Are you really sure? 
Now, when I ask you that question, you know, I could hear some of you very boldly, yes! Bakit? Nando ka ba? <laughs> now, I'm playing the devil's advocate because, you know, some people would argue, bakit ka naniniwala dyan sa mga bagay na yan? Were you there? Now, of course, we were not there, di ba? But is that reason enough for us not to believe in that? Kasi, you know, for example, naniniwala tayo na there was such a thing as World War II. How many of you believe that there was such a thing as World War II? Buhay ka na ba nun? Wala ka naman doon. How many of you know na dumating dito si Magellan? Some of you don't know. Sige, tuturuan ko kayo. Dumating si Magellan po rito. You know, in 1521. Kung di ako nagkakamali sa aking history. Okay? At alam natin na siya ay pinatay ni Lapu-Lapu. How many of you know that? Bakit kilala mo ba si Lapu-Lapu? Nando ka ba nun nangyari yan? So where do we rely sa ating information? We rely on eyewitnesses accounts, historical records. So there's nothing really weird for us o tayo po to believe that Jesus rose again from the dead because of the eyewitnesses who have written about that. So the only way talaga that we can actually uh, disprove that Jesus did not rise again is by questioning the very records na meron tayo, which is no other than the scriptures. If you can prove na yung mga sumulat, hindi naman talaga sila ang sumulat, o nung sumulat sila, they were lying, o kaya yung documents na hawak natin are not really the authentic ones, then maybe you can prove. But yung, I, I want you to understand something. The resurrection... It's a very, very important part of the gospel. Kasi if Jesus did not rise again from the dead, then lahat tayo rito are self-deceived. And there's no reason bakit kailangan pa magturo ng salita ng Diyos. Everything just falls down. The whole Christian faith is meaningless if Jesus did not rise again from the dead. Bakit? That means everything that he said, and he said a lot about his rising again. So if he did not really rise again, then everything else that he said is really false. Even yung mga sinabi niya na through him we are forgiven, that would be false. Pati yung sinabi niya na if you believe in me, you will be saved. Even that, hindi mo pwede pagkatiwala. If he remained buried in the tomb. So, His rising again is so crucial sa ating faith. Pag walang resurrection, Christianity falls. At lahat kami mga nagtuturo ng Word of God, we should find another job. So, it's so crucial. Do you understand? Itong doctrine na to of the resurrection of Jesus. But even more so, I believe, na para sa ating mga mananampalataya, if our conviction about the resurrection is shallow, I don't think any one of us dito would be motivated enough to share our faith. Because why would you share your faith to others kung, you know, haka-haka mo lang yan, opinion mo lang yan? People probably would tell you, and I'm sure, baka narinig nyo na ito, baka kayo mismo nasabi nyo na ito eh. Siguro na meron na rin na kayo mga tao na sabi, nagsasabi na, well, you know, yan ang paniniwala mo. Eh. Why should you impose that to me? Kung kayo naniniwala kayo dyan, di kanya-kanya na lang tayong paniniwala. Have you heard of that? I mean, if you want to be a Christian, well, paano naman yung mga iba? Paano yung mga Muslims and mga Buddhists? Ibig mo sabihin, pupunta rin sila sa impyerno? How dare you, Christians? Masyado kayong arrogante. Of course nga naman. If what we are saying is that Jesus did not really rise again from the dead, then wala tayong karapatan to even tell others about Jesus. And why would we say na siya lang talaga ang way in order for us to be saved? So kung di talaga siya nag-rise again from the dead, the whole thing just collapses. In fact, you should check your own heart. 
Because maybe kaya hindi ka nagsishare ng faith mo is because you don't really believe that Jesus rose again from the dead. Because if you believe that Jesus rose again from the dead, then that changes everything. Then even itong mundo na to, and my life, and your life, right now, lahat lang ito changes in its perspective. Because if Jesus rose again from the dead, then He is Lord. And if He is Lord, therefore, lahat ang sinabi niya is truth. And therefore, I cannot keep to myself the truth that God has revealed through Jesus. And for me to live my life na hindi man lang ako nagsasabi kahit kanino about Jesus Christ is really just the evidence na ang faith ko is masyado mababaw. Or maybe hindi ko pa masyado na pag-iisip-isipan yun. I mean, has anybody here met someone na namatay and then nabuhay muli? Just raise up your hands. Meron ba kayong kamaganak na namatay at binurol nyo? And then after three days rose again. Wala pa naman, okay? Kung meron, wag mo na ikwento sa amin. Baka magtakbuhan kami rito. But here's the truth. Such an event, such an event, if indeed it happened and we believe it happened, then it is the most life-changing event in all of history. Amen? At dapat pinagmeditatean mo yan. Dapat pinag-iisipin mo maigi yan because it affects all your life. Yung, yung purpose mo sa mundong ito, yung, it, it affects even kung anong klaseng karir ang ipoperso mo, kung sinong klaseng tao ang pakakasalan mo. Why does it affect? Because Jesus is Lord. And therefore, all of my decisions in life right now must be in light of that truth. Otherwise, I don't really believe. Kaya nga inconsistent yun for somebody to say, well, I believe in Jesus and then he lives his life as if Jesus is not Lord. Hindi yan consistent. Ang tawag dyan, crazy. Kasi sinasabi ng bibig mo, pero siya namang kabig ng yung dibdib. <laughs> so, today I want us to look at one of the documents that are written concerning this matter. At yan ay walang iba kundi yung the book of Matthew or the gospel of Matthew. And in the last chapter ng book na yan, he tells us some details na kung i-examine natin maigi, gives our faith substance. What do I mean by substance? Ibig ko sabihin yung faith mo, hindi lang basta blind faith. If I ask you, naniniwala ka ba that Jesus rose again from the dead? Opo. Bakit? Basta po. Do you believe that Jesus rose again from the dead? Opo. Bakit? Hindi ko po alam. So I want to put substance in your faith. Because we don't want to just tell people na naniniwala tayo sa isang bagay and wala tayong dahilan. Now, of course, ultimately, you cannot really convince a person kung ayaw nyo talaga kahit bigyan mo pala sa katermang scientific proof yan. Because ultimately, it's by faith. Amen? Ibig sabihin, you know, kahit na-lay down natin lahat ng pruweba dyan, ultimately, decision mo yan whether you will believe or not. Pero at the same time, I, be, I believe naman po na hindi naman ibig sabihin I be, uh, naniniwala ako na parang you know, blind faith lang yan na naniniwala na, na wala akong dahilan. I want us to understand bilang Christians, you know, listen carefully now, faith is not against knowledge. Ibig sabihin, faith doesn't mean na, na wala kang knowledge. Faith means may knowledge ka, but yet at the same time, faith mo is based on what you do not see. Amen? Because I may not have been there. <clears throat> Wala ako nung nangyari yun eh. Uh, you know, nung nangyari to 2,000 years ago and Jesus was nailed on the cross and he, was, he died, you know, and He was buried and then on the third day He rose again according to the Scriptures. I was not there. Amen? Anybody was there? Pakitaas lang. I may, I may be wrong. Taas ang kamay na nakapag-time travel na kayo 2,000 years ago. So wala tayo ron, all of us. But does that mean na ang faith ko ay walang paliwanag? Does that mean that my conviction about the risen Lord is something na parang in-embrace ko lang kasi wala na ako ibang choice? Amen? No, I believe there is. And that's why we're going to look carefully to this important truth. The resurrection 
fuels our motivation to fulfill the Great Commission. Ulitin ko po. The resurrection fuels our motivation to fulfill the Great Commission. In other words, if you really believe with all your heart, hindi lang basta parang blind faith, hindi you are convinced that Jesus rose again from the dead, then that should motivate you. That should really motivate you to share your faith. So listen now. Kung today, as I speak, you are not sharing your faith, then maybe perhaps itong message na to would change all of that. So ang dalangin ko, pagkatapos ng ating mensahe ngayong gabi, ng umagang ito, na you would leave this place with a greater conviction and motivation na somehow gagamitin mo kung ano yung meron ka to help as many people come to Christ. Na maaaring hindi ka magaling magsalita, pero siguro you will use whatever influence meron ka to invite people to church. Kung wala ka masyadong, you know, hindi ka masyadong magaling na, you know, na magpaliwanag ng, ng gospel, siguro pwede mong gamitin yung resources mo para pwede magkaroon ng Bible study doon sa kilalalagyan mong lugar. I mean, there are so many things that you can do. You and I, lahat tayo. Walang saling ket-ket in the kingdom of God. Lahat tayo merong pwede ma-contribute. Amen. So say that with me. The resurrection fuels our motivation to fulfill the Great Commission. Salamat sa aking sakristan. go to this chapter. First of all, let's go to uh, the first ten verses. After the Sabbath, okay, at dawn on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. Now, for, for those of us now who are living today, sa present time natin, that may not strike you as unusual. Pero if you were living during that time, at gusto mong patunayan that Jesus rose again from the dead, the last thing na gagawin mo is to use women bilang primary witnesses mo. Because during that time, panahon ni Jesus and the apostles, women, unfortunately, ay hindi binibigyan ng masyadong seryosong konsiderasyon. In fact, ang mga Jews, pang nagpe-pray sila, ganito, uh, Lord, I thank you na hindi ako Gentile, referring sa mga hindi Hudyo, and I also thank you that I'm not a woman. Because uh, pananaw nila, women are not that trustworthy. So I apologize, noon pa namang araw yan, hindi ngayon. Amen. Kasi baka may paglabas ko dyan, patayin nyo ako. I don't mean today, hindi ngayon, before. So itong statement na to is immediately a very, ika nga, important proof na si Matthew is not trying to... Uh, parang deceive any of his readers kasi the fact na minimension niya yung mga babae bilang the first witnesses goes to show na wala siyang iba pang ano, agenda kundi sabihin lang talaga yung totoo because that's a very foolish statement dapat nilagay niya dyan hindi si Mary kundi si Peter siguro or si John bilang unang nakakita kay Jesus na wala na siya sa tomb na yun. so women were the first witnesses amen now sabi First, there was a violent earthquake. For an angel of the Lord came down from heaven and going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. Again, para sa mga taong nabubuhay ngayon, we cannot imagine how that would look like. But let me give you a, a little bit of a, you know, background kung ano itsuro ng mga libingan noong araw, especially itong particular na libingan na ito. Tinatakpa nila ito ng malalaking bato na hindi possible uh, for one human being or you know se- kailangan marami kayo in order for you to ro- roll it out and, and and be able to go inside the tomb. So para magawa ito ng mga disciples, as you well know, nung namatay si Kristo, yung mga disciples were all very much afraid. Takot sila and the last thing that they would want is appear doon sa, sin- sa scene na yun, Kasi kung gagawin nila yun, they probably would be captured as well. 
So paano na roll back yung stone? It was not possible for the disciples to do that, and especially for the women. Alam ko sa panahon natin ngayon, may mga babae na maskulado. Amen? Tinamay katabi mo kung yan ay itsura niya. Kung marami kang dilalabhan siguro, baka maskulado ka, but still you cannot roll the stone. So yung information na yun is a very crucial thing kasi maraming tao na nagsasabi, well siguro ninakaw lang ng mga disciples yan and we shall see later on how that could not be. Because listen carefully, nung dinedeclare na ng mga apostles that Jesus rose again from the dead, napakadali nung time na yun, if indeed hindi talaga nag-rise again from the dead si Jesus, napakadali for them to just simply produce the body at hindi na magpo-prosper ang Christianity. You know, the soldiers could easily just, you know, uh, produce or maybe, you know, gawa sila ng ano para, you know, to prove. Hindi, hindi, ito, hindi din rise again. Look, ano ito? But they could not prove it. And they cannot show it. Now, his appearance was like lightning, sabi niya. And his clothes were white as snow, referring to the angel who appeared. And the guards were so afraid of him that they shook and become like, became like dead men. Now, mga kapatid, ewan ko nakakita na kayo ng isang Roman soldier. I'm sure siguro sa mga palabas, nakakita na kayo. Dahil ko, medyo parang nakakatawa itsura nila kasi nakapalda sila. The reason, bakit nakapalda mga Roman soldier so that they can run. Okay? But yung mga guys ngayon, huwag kayo magpapalda. It's not very appropriate. Okay. Pero mga kapatid, Roman soldiers are, are known for their courage. And kung katulad ni Jesus yung namatay, somebody that has caused a lot of stirring and, and, and controversy sa buong Israel, they would do their best to guard that tomb. At kung merong lalapit dyan, katulad nila Peter o sino man, I mean, hindi naman sila mga Roman soldiers, but if they come near, patay sila lahat. Because the Roman soldiers who are guarding would immediately kill anyone who comes near. So it is impossible for anyone to come and steal kasi it was guarded. And the Bible says that they were so afraid, which means this was a terrifying sight. Para ang isang Roman soldier ay matakot. I remember years ago, during the 1986 revolution, I was there together with my brother. How many of you were there in no? 1986 revolution sa EDSA? Anybody here na? Katulad ko na, you know, magkaisa, you know. Well, I was there, okay, with my brother. Siguro second day yata yun, nasa EDSA ako. Sa so, bandang uh, uh, papuntang Annapolis yata sa, sa tagtagil, tagtagiliran ng krame. And we were there. We were wearing yung mga yellow-yellow, you know, my brother and I. And then, nagkapit-kapit kami ganyan, you know. Kala namin, ang lalak- lalakas namin talaga, di ba? Hindi, hindi namin naintindi yung pinagagawa namin sa buhay namin. But here comes a battalion, a battalion of battle-hardened soldiers from Mindanao. Alam namin taga Mindanao kasi hindi sila clean-cut. May mga bigote sila. Tapos may mga putik sila sa kanilang damit, which means galing sila sa battlefield. And they were arriving, you know, like parang, you know, itsura nila parang lalamunin ka. So nung medyo malayo pa, hindi pa namin masyara nakikita yung naaninagan yung itsura nila. Nandun kami, nakatayo kami ganun. Magkaisa. Banun lumalapit na. Mag-isa ka, you know. So, na-realize na, hindi namin kaya tayuan yun. <laughs> I mean, they're so scary. Can you imagine, makakita ka ng isang battle-hardened marine? Yung itsura niya, di ba? Galing sa gera, galing sa patayan. Hindi yan yung mga tipong mga kadete na, okay, mga pulis na nakikita natin sa bayan, di ba? Na mukhang bagito, di ba? Na pag ginulat ng mga hold up, boo! <laughs> So, hindi natin alam ko ano mangyayari doon. But surely, you know, ito yung mga tipong sundalo na talagang hindi ka aatrasan. And I think, yung proof na yan is something that we need to think about. If you don't believe in the resurrection, then I ask you a question. What could possibly scare these soldiers? Okay. The angel said to the women, do not be afraid. For I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. Now mga kapatid, 
That's an important statement. Kasi nung panahon nila, when you say crucified, hindi na tatapos yun until you die. They don't crucify people and say, Uy, kuchi-kuchi ko. Uy, wag naman. Inis naman kayo. You know? This is not the kind of death na gugustuhin ng, you know, kahit sino sa atin. I mean, this is a kind of death that is so gruesome and so horrible. Na kaya nga pag namatay ng isang tao through crucifixion, parang sinumpa ka na ng Diyos talaga. Yan ang pananaw ng mga tao. And so this statement is a very revealing statement because sabi ng angel, You are looking for Jesus who was crucified. Meaning to say, you know He's dead. Hindi yung nagkunway kanwarian lang. I heard one time in a debate between Muslims and Christians, sabi ng mga Muslims, actually si Jesus, sa sobrang init, siguro kasing init ng Pilipinas noon, nakabilad siyang ganoon, and then hinimatay na siya. So kala ng mga Roman soldiers, napatay na siya, so kinuha na siya. Tapos nung siya nilibing na, doon sa tomb, medyo malamig. At pinaypayan siya ng mga disciples. So si Jesus daw, <laughs> nagising dahil sa malamig na simoy ng hangin. How ridiculous that would be. Unang-una, inispire siya sa tagiliran. And because of his position sa cross, yung blood niya would not be able to circulate. In fact, he will not be able to breathe for long. And he will surely die. And by the way, yung pako po ay hindi sa palm, kundi dito po sa wrist. Which means na tatamaan nun ay yung, mga dugo, yung veins mo. So yung mga nagpapapako kung saan-saan lupalop dyan, hindi nila naintindihan yung ginagawa nila. Kung gusto talaga nila magpapako, sabihin nila sa akin, papakuhin ko sila dito. Para they will die. Obviously, they don't want to die. Kaya dito lang sila nagpapapako. So, kumbaga, parang natinig ka lang noon, di ba? Now, he was crucified, angel, and he is not here. He has risen. Just as he said. Now, that's an important statement kasi pag sinabi just as he said, ibig sabihin ito, sinabi na ni Jesus that he will die and rise again. So, if it did not happen, everything na kanya sinabi will be false. Sabi niya, come and see the place where he lay. In other words, pinakita talaga ng angel sa, sa dalawang babae na to na wala doon si Jesus sa tomb. Now, these are the actual historical records of what happened. And I'm telling you this, I'm walking you through this kasi minsan iniisip, pagtinanong kita, do you believe Jesus rose again from the dead? Opo. Why do you say so? Hindi ko po alam. Sabi lang po ng pastor namin. Well, I want you to know exactly what happened. So that yung faith mo hindi lang naka-base of blind faith. That there are indeed reasons why we believe that. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, He has risen from the dead and is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see Him. Now I have told you. Now this is interesting. Kasi again, katong sinabi ko sa iyo kanina, mga babae, hindi masyado pinaniniwalaan yan. But can you imagine itong instruction na to? If I were the angel, sasabihin ko sa mga babae, dito na lang kayo, wag na kayong makialam. Ako na lang, kasi angel ako. Ako na makikipag-usap sa mga disciples. Now picture this with me, yung mga disciples, nandun sa kwarto, you know, takot at takot sila kasi namatay yung kanilang master, yung kanilang ano, and then here comes the women, ay, ay, the boy, si Jesus, ay, di ba ganun mga women? Di ba ganun mga women? Ay, you know, and so, grabe, you know, di ba? Kaiba! Parang yung kagabi nanonood ako. Yung si Lo, yung Lola na bumibirit ng, ano ba yun? Ages. Di ba? Nung nakita niya yung Ages ba, ah! So siguro ganun. Yung mga babae, sila Mary, pagdating nila sa mga disciples, at ako, grabe! Grabe! And I can imagine the disciples saying, nako ito mga babae, ito may nainom na naman. Not a very good thing. Which means that all of these facts, all of this narration could not have been made up. Kasi if you're making up something, aalisin mo yung anything that might cause doubt. Pero they're including all the information na para sa isang tao in the first century when he reads this, parang hindi niya ma- maisip na, malubos maisip na, ganito yung mga nangyahari. Sana man i-cover, di ba? Ang mga, minsan sa government, 
maybe not exactly our government, but you know, maybe in the, in the other governments, pag gusto nila pagtakpan na isang bagay, they, they, you know, they sugarcoat it, ibabalita sa'yo na, di ba, baka kunyari kung labing dalawang inamatay sa isang masaka, sabi nila, meron pong dalawang nasugatan. Pero totoo na marami namatay. And you need to do that para, you know, para mapatunayan mo isang bagay. But Matthew never did that. Instead, he laid down the facts. So the women hurried away from the tomb, afraid yet filled with joy, and ran to tell his disciples. So nagtatakbo sila to tell his disciples. Suddenly, Jesus met them. Hmm. Greetings, he said. And they came to him, clasped his feet, and worshipped him. Now, I'm sure si Matthew was simply told about this. Wala siya doon na nangyari ito. Yung dalawang babae lang yun na doon who saw this. And they clasped his feet. Which means hindi siya multo. Dahil kung multo siya, pag ginanong mo yung tatagos lang yung kamay mo. So he was really alive. And ito, then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. Can you imagine kung ikaw yung mga babae, you know, and then they say this to you? And Jesus says this to you, by the way, you know, and how, how would you react to that? Diba? Kaya maniniwala kaya yung mga disciples sa amin. Pupunta pa kami sa Galilee. Eh, actually, yung mga disciples ayaw nga lumabas ng kwarto. For them to even go out would be to risk yung life nila. While the women were on their way, and this is according to Matthew, some of the guards went into the city and reported to the chief priests everything that had happened. So, kinuwento nila lahat, blow by blow. So, which means, na siguro, naka, nakatigas lang sila ganun habang lahat ito nangyayari. So, yung lawang babae, kausap yung angel, yung angel naman, nabibigay ng instructions. So, yung mga guards, siguro marahil, parang, kasi how else can they tell the story? They were just frozen there. So, they told the story. Ito, when the chief priest had met with the elders and devised a plan, they gave the soldiers a large sum of money telling them, You are to say, ito dapat na magkikwento nyo, sabihin nyo sa mga tao. His disciples came during the night and stole him away while we were asleep. Sabihin nyo nga po, dumb. You know why, alam nyo ba yung dumb? Hindi yung sa tubig, yung parang hinaharangan mo yung tubig. Uh, dumb, D-U-M-B. Why? Because no one can possibly understand kung bakit mayroong mga soldiers who will be asleep while guarding. Can you imagine a soldier telling everybody, nga pala, tutulog kami. Tapos habang natutulog kami, dumating yung mga disciples, ninakaw, inikot nila yung, ano, yung bato, kinuha nila yung body ni Jesus. Ayun, pagkising na kami, wala na. That's a stupid story. Di ba? In fact, pag sinabi nila yun, ang consequence nun is death. If you're a soldier na inatasa kang magbantay ng isang ganon at tapos nakawala o nawala yung ano, you, you will die for it. Ganon ang policy ng, 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 ano, ng, ng Roman e- ng Empire. I mean, ngayon, iba na ngayon, di ba? Di ba, pag pumunta kami isa sa kapag gabi na, napapadaan kayo sa mga lugar-lugar na may gwardiya. No? Kapansin nyo ba kung ano pwesto ng gwardiya? Hindi yung nakatayong ganyan, di ba? Hindi. Ang pwesto ng gwardiya, ganito. Tulog. Now, fortunately, hindi siya mamamatay. Pag, di ba, pag sa kanil may mangyari, siguro baka ano lang yun, di ba, matanggal lang sa trabaho. But during those days, matulog ka, you'll die. So it could not have been made up. Amen? If this report gets to the governor, we will satisfy him and keep you out of trouble. So, so the soldiers took the money and did as they were instructed. And this story has been widely circulated among the Jews to this very day. In other words, yung paniniwala na may nagnakaw ng katawan ni Jesus was a story that had its origin dito sa pangyayaring ito. But, you know, think about it for a second. Gusto ko yung faith natin, merong ano, may logic. Right? Kung si Jesus did not rise again from the dead, at haka-haka lang to ng mga disciples na nagdelirio. In other words, kumbaga parang nahibang lang sila. Nabuhay muli si Jesus! Sana! Nandiyan sa aming panaginip. You know, if that was really the case, let me tell you this. 
Hindi tatagal ng isang linggo ang Christianity. The gospel will not change people's lives because it's very easy to produce the body. Ituturo lang nila yung libing. Ito yung libing, ano, yan, may bato. Ano sinasabi yung ginulong yung bato? Alika, oh. Ayan, nakahiga, oh. So Christianity would not even go beyond one week. Now, then the 11 disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. So specifically, sinabi sa kanila ng Panginoon, meet me there. When they saw Him, they worshipped Him. And some of the most amazing words come right after that. But some, read with me, but some doubted. Think about it for a second right now. They saw him and they doubted. So hindi ka katakataka na meron mga tao ngayon, and maybe some of you are here, Kayo, hindi nyo nga nakita eh. So some of you may even doubt that Jesus rose again from the dead. So we're not surprised. Kasi may mga tao nung time na yun, nakita na nga nila eh. And yet they doubted. That's why I believe that kahit anong scientific proof ang ibigay mo sa isang tao kung ayaw nyo talaga manampalataya, there's nothing you can do about that. Kasi mismo yung mga tao nakakita eh. Had doubts. But nevertheless, pangyari, then Jesus came to them and said, Now, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Now, please understand what that means. Hindi ibig sabihin ito na dun pa lang sa point na yon nagkaroon siya ng all authority. Because even before he died, he was already showing authority. He was raising the dead, he was casting out demons, he was already healing the sick. He already had the authority. Pero ngayon, in his resurrection... Ang scope ng authority ngayon is no longer just yung parang nakikita nating creation, but all authority in heaven and on earth. Alam niyo kung sino sakop nun? Would you know kung anong sakop ng authority ni Jesus? Do you know? It's a magic word. Say it with me. Oh. Say mo sa katabi mo. Oh. Ah. Ah. Not some, not a few things in your life. Hindi yung may problema ka lang sa emotional and then si Jesus has authority over that. Hindi yung parang meron ka lang problema ng konti kasi wala kang pera. Jesus has authority over all the universe. And if he, did, if he did not rise again from the dead, then wala tayong motivation o, kalak- o lakas ng loob to even go and tell people about Jesus. Because sasabihin lang ng mga tao sa atin, bakit? Sino kayo? Paano yung ano namin? Because all authority has been given unto him. And here's my challenge to you. Do you really believe this? Then why are you not sharing your faith? If you really believe that Jesus is Lord of all, then lahat ng mga kakilala mo who do not believe that, they are going to hell. And then you say, hindi pastor, ang bait naman ng friend ko. Does he know the Lord? Does he believe the Lord? Hindi, pero mabait naman siya. I'm sorry. Huwag kang magagalit. Jesus is Lord of all. And unless you believe in Him, you will not be saved. So sabi niya, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to you. Therefore, therefore, sabi niyo nga po, therefore. Ano ibig sabihin ng therefore? Therefore. Why is it therefore? It is therefore. Ibig sabihin, conclusion niya. If this is true, therefore, if Jesus is Lord, ano dapat ang ginagawa mo? Ano dapat ang ginagawa natin? Attend church? If it is true that Jesus rose again from the dead and that He is Lord, ano dapat ginagawa mo dyan? Ano dapat ang ginagawa ko in my life? Go! 
and make disciples of all nations. So everything is affected sa buhay natin if you really believe that Jesus rose again from the dead. Pag tumatanggap ako ng pera, where does it go? Does it go to my pocket lang and then go to the grocery store and, and pocket? Pera ko goes only to the things that I want to buy? Or does it go and make disciples of all nations? Some of us dito are not really thinking about this very well. Yung iba sa atin dito, we say this, I believe in the resurrection. But then I ask you, so what are you doing about that? See, the resurrection is not just for us to sing and celebrate. The resurrection should change our lives. And it should also motivate us para i-share ang faith natin sa ibang tao. Again, I don't mean to say na kailangan lahat tayo tumayo dyan sa kanto dyan, tapos maglagay ng speaker, maglagay ng pulpitong kahoy, tapos hallelujah, hallelujah, offering, offering. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about tayo rito, tulong-tulong, sama-sama, doing what we can so that the world may know that Jesus is Lord. So dapat lahat tayo may ginagawa. Amen? Sa'yo mo sa katayo mo naniniwala ka ba? That Jesus is alive? Sagutin mo. Tanungin mo siya ulit, talaga? Sabi mo, oo. Oh. Tanungin mo siya ulit, sure ka ba? Sagutin mo ulit, oo. Oh. Tapos tanungin mo siya, anong ginagawa mo? Wala na gusto sumagot. <laughs> I believe that Jesus rose again. Oh, praise God. Ang ganda ng faith statement mo, ha? Ano ginagawa mo dyan? Hola! Are you using your financial blessings? Are you using your position in life? Are you using yung, yung, yung work mo, yung trabaho mo? Are you using yung friendship mo? Are you using yung smile mo? Are you using anything that you have that God has given you? Are you using it so that others may know that Jesus is Lord? Because if not, yung sinasabi mo na you believe in the risen Lord is just a farce. It's false. Hindi ka sincere. Amen. Sayo mo sa katabi mo, si pastor talaga pinatatamahan ako. Now listen. Therefore go and sabi niya, make attendees of all nations. Mali po, ha? Make disciples. And what is a disciple? A disciple is a follower, a student, somebody who's learning all about Jesus every day ng buhay niya. Hindi yung go and make attendees. Yung a-attend lang every Sunday and sabi, hallelujah, huwi na tayo. You know? a-, a disciple is somebody who says, Jesus, come into my life. I love you. You are my Lord. Teach me your ways. You're a Disciple. Baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Yan ang umpisa. You baptize them and, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. You see, mga kapatid, listen. Alam na yung matatagal na, matatagal na sa Aral CC. Taas ang kamay. Matatagal na kayo sa Aral CC. Talaga? Ta- apat lang? Matag- lahat kayo baguhan dito? Ha? Timeline. Yung tinubuan na ng ugat sa Aral CC. Okay, hindi, joke lang. Okay, <laughs> a lot of you are nangyayala siguro kayo. But listen, listen carefully now. Because sometimes we think, nung no, na-save no, tayo, ang goal lang ng, ng Panginoon lang sa atin, ma-save ka, ma-baptize ka, and then for the rest of your life, aaten ka sa church forever and ever hanggang dumating si Jesus sa kanyang second coming. I have bad news for you. If you are not obeying the Lord right now sa buhay mo, if you are just listening to the Word of God kasi hindi mo siya ino-obey, then you are not really a disciple. Amen? And now granted, of course, wala namang perfect sa atin. Amen ba? Sino sa inyo nagkakamali? Yung hindi nagtakas, mag-ingat kayo dyan. Lahat po tayo nagkakamali. But here's the reason why we should join small groups 
Here's the reason why dapat may mga katuwang tayo sa ating Christian life because we're not perfect. And we need others to assist us sa ating journey of faith. Amen? That's why you, huwag na natin isipin na ang kalooban lang ni Lord is for you to be present on a Sunday. No po, hindi. No. Ang kalooban ni Lord for us, all of us, is matuto tayo ng obedience. Because that is what true worship is all about. So obey everything I have commanded. And then sabi niya, surely, surely, I am with you always to the very end of the age. Now what does that mean mga kapatid? It means na habang nandun tayo, nakasentro sa kanyang gawain, we can always rely upon the promise na yung presence niya will always be with us. You see, ang isang church who's always focused on the Great Commission, they can always expect that God will be present. Once na hindi mo na ginagawa ang Great Commission, most likely mangyayari dyan, you just have rituals and religious events, you know, pero the presence of God is no longer there. That's why I always tell people dito sa RLCC, let us not ever forget kung ano yung mission ng ating Panginoon para sa atin. Go and make disciples of all nations. Hindi conduct events. Hindi yung magkaroon lang tayo ng mga programa. Ang mission ng Panginoon para sa atin is to go and make disciples of all nations. And you know why we're excited about it? Because we really believe that Jesus rose again from the dead. And let me just summarize what we're talking about this morning. I want you to remember this. That the resurrection fuels our motivation to fulfill the Great Commission. Amen? Because we believe that Jesus rose again from the dead, hindi tayo matatahimik at hindi tayo titigil hanggang hindi natin nadadala ang marami mga tao sa Panginoon. And whatever it takes, how much money we have to invest, whatever sacrifices we have to do, we will do it. Because we are a church na ang passion lang natin is the mission of God. We don't want to be a great church. We don't want to be a big church. We don't want to be a church na pinag-uusapan ng mga tao sa sabi, wow, ang laki ng RLCC. We don't want that. All we want is to be faithful to our risen Lord and declare sa lahat ng mga tao makikinig that Jesus rose again from the dead and He is the Savior of all mankind and you must believe in Him kasi He saves completely. And He will change the world. And He wants to start with you. Amen? And He wants to save everyone else, hindi lang ikaw. And He is saving us. And He saved us tayo rito because the world needs to hear the good news. Sama-sama tayo, mga kapatid. This is the great Go mission. Meron tayong dahilan bakit tayo nag exist dito sa mundong ito right now. Hindi lang tayo tinawag ng Panginoon diligtas para ma-enjoy lang natin ang salvation. Tinawag tayo so that we can help the rest of the world to believe and to know Jesus as Lord. That is why we are alive today. Amen? And those of you who agree, I want you to stand up right now.